The last three years, I have been quitting so many things such as alcohol, cigarette, meat, and weed, and all the other things. But the truth is, I actually feel more content and happier about who I am and about all my life without all these things that I quitted in the last three years. I bet you love probably one of those or maybe all of them that makes you feel so good, you know, like you're addicted to it. But you also know that you get hangover and, and you know, wasting your Sundays and feeling like sheer puking in the bathroom. And if you don't go to these parties or, you know, your friends gathering, you feel lonely and you feel like you're missing something. Feelings that we get from this alcohol and parties and weed and all these cigarettes, it's actually a way to feel good so that we are distracting ourselves from these true feelings beneath all of these covered up the feelings. I met a woman when I was 20 and then she's the person who can see the past life. It was very interesting and I had an opportunity to actually have a session with her. So she looked into my eyes very deeply and then she said, this is exactly what I think she said. She said, I see a samurai. And she also said the past life can be many or few. It depends on the spirit. And the strongest one comes up in this current reality. And she said, you need to be number one. Whatever you do, you need to be a number one. Maybe he was in a big family, but then he couldn't be the number one for some reason. So she said, you have to allow yourself to be number one. You have to tell him that you can be number one. I took that conversation pretty seriously. And then I started to carry my samurai spirit and I started to implement and learn all these way of living and attitude. And I've learned this way to what samurais are. And I call it samurai ryu. And ryu means flow. So samurai you represent the samurai way of living. And I believe these elements that I've learned, the samurai you within me, the spirit of samurai that I've been carrying. So since I started to learn this and essentially started to take things seriously with this samurai you, the way of living, the way of approaching things, the way of attitude, my life started to balance itself between intense focus, lots of work, and these vacations and relaxation. Obviously, you need to balance yourself, whatever the situation is, whatever the condition is, your environment, your work, and your private life. And it can be very, very unconditioned, very, very unbalanced. Key in this balancing is that you need to understand there is no work-life balance. You need to understand that you are the one who has to take a balanced in unbalanced condition. So overall, I keep traveling, and right now I'm traveling in inside of Japan domestically, and basically every month I go travel around into the different places, different island, and I still produce high quality content every single day, and then I keep having a session with my clients almost every day because I learned this samurai do myself, and then developed it into myself, my routine on a daily basis. That's why I could now balance myself between intense focus and the freedom, the relaxation. And this way of living, this philosophy, the idea will definitely help you to be able to balance yourself and actually feel more content and happy and grounded in this fast-paced consuming society that constantly gives us this stress and unhappiness. So I'm going to teach you exactly how I did it and what you need to know and how you can do it too. So I'm going to teach you exactly three elements, the key in this samurai do will help you definitely to become confident, be grounded, be calm and less reactive towards the external factors in your environment. The people around you makes you stress and like fucking giving you pressures and everything. This will help you to train you to become samurai. So let's dive in. Number one, stillness. In the fighting of the samurai, it's all about 0.1 second. The moment that you lack your focus, you're done. And this is how much you need to be focused in the fighting of the samurai. And in Japan, we value of this stillness. And if you look at the, all these people who has a, such a great skill in hands, they are basically a master of stillness. They are highly focused and then they can accomplish just tiny, tiny sensitive skills. So in Japan as a tribe, we value of the movement of say. And say means the stillness. On the other hand, the Western culture has more power in the movement of door, which means the movement itself. If you think about the gladiators and Romans, fighting with the swords and hammers and a big physique has actually more movement of the door, but less stillness. And the movement of say is the most important part in the samurai. And this is pretty much the most difficult thing to do in a human being. 
Now, mastering this stillness is essentially the key to be in this momentum, be in the present moment, and this tiny, tiny momentum called ski. Ski is like a slight change of the movement or your breath or the lack of focus, that momentum, the tiny, tiny space that the opponent can come and kill you. And in order to master the stillness, obviously you need to tap into the flow state and you need to master the ultimate focus. And the best way to approach is the meditation. And this will teach you to how to master the movement of say. And the best part is that you don't need anything. You can do anywhere and then you can do anytime you want and then you don't need any equipment. The best way to start is five minutes, 10 minutes with a guided meditation. Meditation has a lot of different level, different ways to approach. And I also have a med guiding meditation for the beginners to start up your meditation journey. And I recommend everybody to at least meditate 20 minutes a day and ideally 30 minutes every day because the more you immerse yourself in the stillness and emptiness, the movement of say, the more you become good at controlling this emotions and thoughts and immersing yourself in this momentum because lack of focus essentially creates so much stress within you. The fact that you cannot execute anything, you're procrastinating things in your life and you, can, you can't just sit with your emotions. You feel stressed with basically all the things happening in your life, with your people, your friends, your boss, your job. An ironic fact is that we are a living creature, but we are oblivious to our life itself. And in order to optimize your presence, your actual presence in this life, you have to learn this movement of say and learn how to be in this present moment. Number two, Nagas, do not resist. And this movement called Nagas is actually the same alphabet as the Samurai Ryu. It means flow. In a physical movement, it would be something like this. So it doesn't create impact, but you will use that force to let it slip. And in a mental or spiritual aspect, it would be the art of flow. Imagine when you're in the river, you're stepping into the river right now and you're standing in the river. So you create the resistance onto your legs. So now you are not going anywhere. You're standing in the same space and the flow, the current of the river is just hitting your legs constantly and then creating resistance. But if you are completely on the river, floating in the river, now you probably will be carried away by the current to the ocean, so you are moving. And there is no resistance. You're not creating any resistance, you're going with the flow. Like literally you are on the flow, on the current, and there is no resistance. So when you are in the situation, imagine the river is your life, your situations, your conditions, your environment. When you're creating a resistance by yourself with between you and also the current, which is the negativity or the people or things that people say to you, the moment you start to resist onto this current and the flow, all these people and then, you know, the things that, that you're receiving, the criticism or environment, the stress and everything, the more you resist to it, it's harder to remain calm and think rational. And Musashi Miyamoto, one of the famous Samurai back in the history of Edo. He wrote a book called Book of the Five Rings. He mentions in this book that your body and mind shouldn't be connected. Your mind should be always calm and not too spirited, but very rational. And then your body should move effectively, not too spirited, but not too physical. And then he has to move effectively, rationally, instead of emotionally. So essentially, if you create the resistance or if you lose control of your emotion or your physical body, then you're not moving effectively nor not rationally. In a daily life, if you think about it, when you're emotional and when you text with your boyfriend, girlfriend, or your ex or the girl that you're dating, and then you lose control, you're so emotional now and then you're texting three texts without getting any response and then you're making things worse because you're emotionally moving. Or any situation that you can think of, if you're emotionally moving, then you're making things worse. If you emotionally invest things, you most likely lose a lot of money. So in this number two, what you need to do is that you need to welcome that emotion. Whenever you feel that urge, that strong emotions comes to, don't resist. Let it feel and observe your emotion as something that is part of you. Don't hate that emotion. 
understand emotion. And if I uh, if I am in your shoes, your situation that you're trying to handle your emotions, and what I would do is that I would literally let it feel and ask myself, why am I feeling this way in the first place? Understand the emotions. Where does it come from? And understand it because it's part of you. And be able to sit in that tension. Be able to let it feel. Remember, mind and body shouldn't be connected. All right, number three, discipline. And discipline is the most important element to level up your self-value, self-worth, and an ability of yourself. This is the essential to manifest your desire into your reality. And there are so many ways to teach yourself a discipline and challenge yourself to stay disciplined. But there's a two part, one in mind, one in the body, and they will definitely have such a big impact positively. So one for your mind is to control your sexual desire. Your sexual desire is basically the biggest, the strongest emotions, the desire in a human being. And the other one for your body is to literally work out for your physical body. Because if you think about it, body and mind shouldn't be connected, it's separated. And then both are, let's say, your weapon, something that you can protect yourself, something that you can actually express yourself. Which means, if you're only working on your body, that means you you can get to the, the halfway. You can't go to the all the way because you're not working on your mind. So then if you're working on your mind and not working on your body, that means you can also go to the halfway. But if you're both working mind and body, then that's when you can reach the highest potential of yours. So being able to control your biggest desire, the strongest desire, and then calm yourself down and think rationally, and then being able to move effectively, that makes you being able to move effectively under the stress in this society. It is more than life. So anything that challenges your mind, trying to something that you're scared, trying something new, or working yourself, take a cold shower, or anything that challenges your body, go to the sauna, that would train your mind and the body too. And then if you work on your body and mind and then build a strong presence, your energy is now different and then your energy can communicate other people's energy and that actually threaten other people that can actually affect positively negatively and if you have a strong positive influence with your energetic presence people can feel before you open your mouth people can feel your presence before you actually start talking and expressing yourself without discipline you cannot tolerate yourself with the stress and pressure that you will have as you develop yourself and you level up and accomplishing goals, the more you accomplish your goals, the more you level up, the more stress and the more pressure that you will have. And often we need to make a critical decisions in our life under the pressure, under the stress. So building discipline within you will definitely help you to make a better decision in life. Better decision equals a better life. All right, let's do a recap. Number one, master the stillness. Number two, master the flow. Nagas, no resistance. And number three is to stay disciplined. All right, with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video will encourage you to challenge yourself, start a meditation, start developing yourself, and making better decisions. All right, guys, stay disciplined, stay beautiful. Love you.